today's episode has been brought to you by Offering Tree. Because of their amazing support, this podcast that you're listening to right now is free for your ears. So if you have a moment to reach out to them, tag them on Instagram or Facebook or email them or shout it out your window right now, it would mean so much if you would say thank you to Offering Tree for supporting this podcast along with the work that yoga teachers are doing. Hello and welcome to the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast. I'm your host, Shannon Crow. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a Canadian who is learning more about what it means when you live on Indigenous land because all of my ancestors came here as immigrants from Ireland, England, Scotland, and Germany, and they settled on Anishinaabek, Odawa, and Mississauga land. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you know that I also share a random fact about me. This is something that's fairly new again. I am making so much sourdough these days. I've done that a long time ago in the past when the kids were little, but my kids are older now. I'm a mom of three and my oldest son, Wyatt, He looked at me the other day, all serious when he was over here visiting us. And he said, mom, I think we need to have a serious talk. And I was like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? (laughs) He said, things are getting out of hand with all this bread making. (laughs) Anyway, I showed him last month over the holidays, I learned how to make the best pumpernickel bagels that, that's what my family told me, they're the best ever. And today at lunch, my daughter and I made a batch of sourdough tortillas. So it continues, friends. If you are a fellow sourdough bread maker, I would love to hear from you. Tag me in a photo of your latest creation. I'm at The Connected Yoga Teacher on Instagram and on Facebook. You can find me under Shannon Crow, just like the bird, C-R-O-W. So what else about me? I'm a yoga teacher, podcaster, and founder of Pelvic Health Professionals. And all of that combined and how I remember the struggle of what it was like to be a new yoga teacher, feeling really isolated and alone That is why this podcast was created for you, so that each and every week you can be connected to the information and inspiration that's going to support you as you build your yoga business, because you're an entrepreneur and a yoga teacher. There's so much to learn, and so we try and bring you the topics to help you with the challenges that you might be facing, to help you with the questions that you might have. And we also have some really inspirational stories from other fellow yoga teachers, like today's episode. So one of the things a lot of yoga teachers I've worked with through the years have asked me about and who have told me that they're afraid of this, it's niching down and specializing niche work. So I get it. I have felt it myself, how much doubt and reluctance we might feel around picking a niche. It might feel like, well, wait, there's so much that I want to do in this world and I don't want to just niche down. Now I have to tell you that I have seen over and over again how much of an impact niching down can have on someone's business and how much it can simplify the work that they're doing. I get really excited about niching down. And so I'll include other episodes. If you want to learn more, I'll include those in the show notes. But today, I'm most excited because we have an interview with Laura Fowler Massey, who's a fellow Canadian yoga teacher. And she talks about how she created a niche online course. So you actually get to hear her results, what she learned along the way, and what has supported her. Laura has been a yoga practitioner for over 30 years. And in 2008, she became a yoga teacher and since then has taken many different specialty trainings, including slow, mindful yoga, yoga for pelvic health, yoga nidra, and children's yoga. 
Laura is also an early childhood educator with a BA in psychology and a master's degree in education. And that is what led her to creating and leading this very specialized yoga teacher training designed specifically for early childhood educators. Now, like many of us, Laura developed this as an in-person training, and then she had to switch to online in a hurry because of the pandemic. And despite all of this, her course has been so successful and it's allowed her business to grow more than ever. So we talk about marketing a niche offering, a very specialty offering, creating a Facebook group that focuses on that specialty group, how to grow your audience and what helped Laura on the tougher days, why showing up consistently is important as well as a lot of the fears and objections people have around niching down. We covered a lot of things in this episode, Connected Yoga Teachers, and I'm so excited that you get to hear someone's story of niching down, specializing, and how this all came together for them. Now, before we dive in and learn how Laura created her niche online course, let's say a huge thank you to our sponsor, Offering Tree. So as I said, we're going to listen to a fellow Canadian, Laura Fowler Massey today in today's episode. And I don't know how things are where you are, but here in Ontario, Canada, where I am, as I record this episode for you, we are all back to online yoga. Studios are closed again here. I think we find out exactly on this date, January 17th in Ontario, if things will lift and open again. And this week, a yoga teacher reached out to me and said, oh my gosh, I need something that will make my life easier for teaching online yoga. And I told them what I tell many yoga teachers. The simple answer is to look at what Offering Tree gives to yoga teachers. Now, this yoga teacher told me that she was hesitant to go online, even though we've had these waves of the pandemic and everyone is moving online, but she's now seeing how it can be so useful to have that set up for when you need it. Plus, you can teach from anywhere in the world and to anyone in the world when you're sharing online yoga. So yes, I miss being in person with people. I know that our yoga students miss that, but I know also so many yoga teachers who tell me that their students are so glad that they still have yoga because it's online. Last year, I tried Offering Tree out. I hosted a live workshop on there. Tristan Katz was the facilitator of the workshop. I set everything up on Offering Tree and I was really impressed with how simple it was. Everything from payments to auto emails to the Zoom link, everything was there for people. And I got to use it with my existing WordPress website. Now, if you don't have a website, you can set one up with Offering Tree in about 10 minutes. And I am not exaggerating when I say that. It's actually really quick to set one up. So if you don't want to bother with code, plugins, updates to your hosting and your website and a more complicated website like WordPress, then this is designed for you. And I think the best thing is that the team over at Offering Tree is really listening to what yoga teachers need. So they add the features that get asked for the most so that you can share your workshops, courses, live classes, trainings, anything that you are creating, you can share it on their platform. They also have a super helpful Facebook group in case you're thinking, oh my gosh, I need some technical help right now. They have a great support team. And you can also see in that Facebook group what other people's questions are or how they're using Offering Tree, which is really cool. Also, as usual, we have a discount to share with you if you sign up with Offering Tree. So make sure you use that. Go to offeringtree.com slash Shannon or... If you're busy, you're on the go, you can't write this down, just go to our website and look for today's show notes. That's over at theconnectedyogateacher.com slash 255. And you can find the Offering Tree logo and click on that. Alrighty, 
let's dive in and learn how Laura niched down to offer this very specialized online course. Welcome to the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast, Laura. It is so good to have you here today. Oh, thank you so much. Tell our listeners who don't already know you, what is the work that you do and who do you do it for? I am the owner of Yoga Chelsea, which is a yoga studio, which currently resides in my house. (laughs) I have a studio in my house, but I also teach out in the community when that's a possibility. And I'm also the creator of Calm Kids Yoga, which is a children's yoga teacher training specifically designed for early years educators. So people that work with young children in various childcare and early learning settings. So that's kind of my niche. When did you decide to bring this together, like early childhood education and yoga? Like, how did that happen? Well, my background is I am an early childhood educator, and I was a frontline educator for 25 years until I went on to do some post-secondary graduate work. I have a master's degree in education, and I now teach early childhood education at the college level, and I've done that now since 2007, I think. And also, I'm a yoga teacher, and I've been teaching yoga since about 2007 also, So over the years, I used to do workshops and small trainings for early childhood educators, how to bring yoga into the work that they do with young children. And it was always sort of a bit of a little sideline as I was mostly teaching adult yoga and also teaching early childhood education at the college level. So eventually, I had this dream that I would bring these two kind of passions in my life together And so I took a sabbatical last winter, right when the pandemic really hit, and I focused on uh, creating the full Calm Kids Yoga Teacher training for early childhood educators. I created the manual and created all of the handouts and all of that stuff and really dove into it. And it was really exciting. I did my first in-person training at the beginning of February And then the pandemic arrived. So that changed everything. So you had done the first part of that training in person then? Right. I'd always had it in my mind that I was going to turn this into an online offering because it would just made it so much more available for people, right? To a broader reach and more accessibility for a lot of people. But at the same time, initially, I wanted to do it in person training. So that's what I did. And it went really, really well. And I loved it and got great feedback. And then the pandemic hit. So that was like, oh dear, now I have to really pivot quickly, very quickly, and get this training online. So I just jumped right in. I had a business coach that helped me to do the designing of how I was going to deliver the course and how I was going to market the course, those kinds of things. And then I had already had a group of people registered to take the next in-person training in April. But of course, that couldn't happen because we were all in lockdown. So that was why I had such a push to, uh, instead of losing all of that business, I had 17 people registered. I wanted to turn it into an online offering and, and sort of just move those people into the online version of the training. And so that's what I did. And it worked out really great. And then I offered it to even more people. And so in a number of months, two months, <laughs> I guess, I turned it all around and then began to offer it online. And it's been going terrific. That's amazing. So it sounds like you had a great turnout. I'm so curious to hear how did you market? And also as a side note, like who are you marketing to? So is it early childhood educators or is it someone who employs those people? Who's your audience? Right. Well, I do market directly to early childhood educators and early years professionals. So anyone who is working with young children 
And yes, I market directly to the early childhood educators, but yes, I also market to employers because a lot of times employers have uh, professional development funding that they have allocated for training for their staff. And so this is something that I make sure that they know about my training so they can offer it to their staff and those who are interested. So what I did initially, which was the on the advice of my business coach, was I developed a Facebook group and I began to share free offerings and free PDFs and ideas and helpful suggestions and things like that. And I began to create a bit of a following and then I would offer the training to people. And it was something that people really did want. And then I began to reaching a little bit further out, not just from the people that were in my Facebook group, but I began to reach out to other groups of early childhood educators around the province of Ontario, which is where I'm very well connected because that's where most of my career has been. And then I began to reach out across Canada, and that's been so much fun. And connecting with organizations and groups across Canada. So school boards, professional associations, unions within school boards and things like that. And so as I broadened my reach, I got more and more feedback and more and more people just began to register. So that was terrific. That's amazing that you reached out to like even the unions. I never would have thought of that in terms of marketing channels. I know. Yeah. Was there a time in there, like one of the biggest worries that yoga teachers have when they niche down, which is what you've done, is that you then have less people to market to. Did you ever have that feeling or that worry? I do remember a little bit of fear around this niching down, but at the same time, that didn't really last long because I still teach to adults and predominantly women my age, which I love, but that's a separate thing. I know because, you know, I've been within the early childhood sector since the mid 1980s. So I know there are a lot of educators out there. So I quickly put that worry aside. It was more about how do I reach them? Not that there weren't enough of them out there, because I know there are, but how do I reach them? That was a challenge at first. So like I said, I created this Facebook group, which was great. You know, that's still perhaps just reaching a certain population who want to engage on Facebook and who want to be in a group and that kind of thing. But I wanted to broaden it even more. And so, yeah, I started to think about where does my target audience live, as it were, in their professional life? Like, where do they interact and engage with each other? And so that's when I started to think about professional associations that they may belong to. Every province has an association of early childhood educators. And also then the unions, like I said, that was sort of a light bulb moment for me because I remember I worked for a child care program many years ago that was unionized and the union also has money, professional development money to support, you know, workshops and trainings and things for their members. So that was interesting. And then recently I saw a call for presenters for a online conference. This was for resource teachers, specifically early years resource teachers. And so I wrote a proposal and I sent it in And they hired me and I presented at two workshops within their annual conference online, which was terrific. And then when I was marketing my course, I sent them an email. And what I did do, though, that was a terrific idea (laughs) from a marketing perspective, was I offered their members. So the members of this uh, resource teacher network, I offered them a discount, a special discount, and they sent it out to their membership. So I never would have had access to the 10,000 people or whatever it was on their mailing list, right? Except for that I had this connection through the conference that I had done. So I just linked to that and I said, would you like to offer this discount out to your membership to take my course? And that was really, really very successful in reaching people and getting people to enroll. That's a great idea. What were some of the other terrific ideas with marketing? Like 
We all know that you need to build your mailing list and build your connections and get in front of people, but we also know people are busy. They don't open every email. Was your biggest channel email with these people? I did a lot of, I guess, about three different focused things. My email was not very strong initially, so I had to develop that. The first one was through the Facebook group and I offered a lot of free content that I know because I have a specialization in early childhood education and I teach it at the college level, I have a lot of credibility as well. So I would do regular Facebook lives where I would teach simple little techniques or ideas or whatever. And I did that once a week consistently. And then I usually had some kind of a freebie handout that was associated with that Facebook Live. And then I shared that in other groups via Facebook and invited people back to my group. I really grew the Facebook group. And then from there, I offered, you know, I wrote an ebook. And I invited people to come to my website. And if they wanted to sign up for my email list, they could get this ebook. And so that was a huge way to grow my list. So that worked really well. And then the third way really was reaching out to connections that I had in the sector. Some of them didn't work, you know, but a few of them did. So reaching out to any connections that might be at a national level and offering their membership a discount, that was really huge and very successful. You know, it's a little tricky because you don't want to be too pushy, but at the same time, I know what I'm offering is a very good product. And I know that educators, early childhood educators, they want to do professional development that is really effective and useful. And so yoga and simple meditations for young children is so relevant to the work that they do. And also the fact that I actually understand, I speak directly to the early childhood educators as an early childhood educator. Yes, as a yoga teacher also, of course, but I use my professional expertise to really market myself as a subject matter expert. So yeah, you have to put yourself out there and you know, really be a bit brave. But in the end, it's been really successful. It's so great to hear you say like you had a few different channels. You can definitely see them like the Facebook group and you did your ebook and you were building your email list and then these connections as well. And I love how you said lots of them didn't work, but some of them did. Is there anything that you can tell our yoga teacher listeners who are feeling like, oh gosh, I know I have a great thing. I know people want this and need this, but they're struggling to, you know, hit send on that email or put it together or make a quote unquote sales page. Is there anything that you think helped you on those tougher days? Oh yes, absolutely. I had three mottos. They came from the business coach who also borrowed them from other business coaches, I think. And you've heard them before, Shannon, and I've heard them on your podcast and I've heard them on Amanda McKinney's podcast, but start before you're ready. Done is better than perfect and everything is figure outable. <laughs> right. Those were my mottos. I had them written down, honest to goodness, on post-it notes, posted on my fridge and posted, you know, on my computer screen. And and when I would get nervous and I would think, oh my goodness, oh, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this. I'm not sure. Oh, because, you know, we all have those moments. I would just say, no, no, just start, just do it, figure it out. And just one foot in front of the other. And it really, really, really does work if you do it that way. Right. Well, I love also that you had this consistent once a week, you were going to show up, give amazing free content. Are you still doing that now in your Facebook group or do you not need to market as much? No, I still do it because I said I would do it. So I feel committed to it. And I can tell you sometimes it's challenging. I'm very busy. And so squeezing that time in, but I still do it. And I also either I am sharing very relevant material that I find elsewhere, or I'm creating relevant material 
so I'm always present in that group. I think that is important because there are a lot of members that I invited to this group, you know, and said, this is a free group. So yes, I do sell my courses there, but I don't want to just sell my courses there. I want to offer free content to people. So I do feel committed to that. I feel that's important. I feel like also word of mouth, even in the internet world during a pandemic, it still is wonderful advertising. So that helps. And so when I get good positive feedback from people, you know, I'll ask them to share that or can I use your words in my posts? So that's really helpful too, to continue to get the word out there. Yeah, that's amazing. So because you've brought up having a business coach, tell me who are the business coaches that you've worked with or that you've learned from even online? So I have really two. One was to help me develop the course, and that was Emily Cecil. And I was part of her very first group, How to Create an Online Course for Yoga Teachers, like a year ago. And that was a terrific opportunity. And then, of course, Amanda McKinney, I've taken many courses with her and workshops, and she's she's terrific. So she's sort of my marketing coach. So between the two of them, and then, of course, the Connected Yoga Teacher podcast as well, I've learned so many things. And so I try to pull from all three of those sources and, you know, find my path forward, what's going to work for me. Connected Yoga Teachers, I wanted to pop in here and say that we have a link for a discount code to any of Amanda McKinney's offerings, so including her marketing membership that Laura was talking about. I will include that in the show notes along with the link to the podcast that we did with Emily, who Laura also mentions. I think it's so helpful. I know for myself, you know, Every once in a while, I'll either work with a business coach or with a mastermind, and it makes a huge difference in my business. And sometimes it just makes a difference like I can call someone up or leave a voice message and just go on and on about my sales funnel for a minute, which no one in my house wants to hear about that. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like also sometimes you have a good idea. I mean, I knew I could create this course. I am a course creator. I have a master's degree in education. That's what I do. I create content and I'm very good at online technology. I'm very comfortable with that. But at the same time, you know, you get sort of nervous about, okay, but I'm going to create this thing. You know, it's about children's yoga and it's a little bit different. And, and I get a little bit nervous about that. And then, you know, you're in a group with other people that are creating courses as well. It's very supportive and you feel like, okay, yeah, I can do this. Yes, I can do it. And so you can set your doubts aside a little bit. It gives you a little bit of confidence to feel supported when you have these other people around you. I also had this idea when you were talking about your Facebook lives that you're doing weekly. Have you ever considered having your videos be on YouTube or do you upload them to YouTube? So I don't have a YouTube channel. I probably should go to YouTube, but at this point, the learning curve of all of the different technology and the merging of all of the technology, especially within that sort of few months when I was really ramping things up for the online course, was a lot. (laughs) And I'm somebody who likes technology and it was still a lot. So I just put YouTube aside for a little while, but I think that it is something that perhaps I should think about going there as well. Well, I'm pretty sure you've seen us go live in the Facebook group with StreamYard. So it pushes to our Facebook group and YouTube at the same time. And I'll tell you, I'm a fellow, like, I don't really want to learn a whole new platform, which YouTube is. I don't follow the rules. I don't make my images pretty (laughs) enough on there. And I can't believe how much it's grown, I think, just because of the content we're putting on there. You know, the podcast goes on there and then so does our live show. It's something to consider because you're already doing it. Exactly. Yes, I think it's the next step that I should probably go to. I'll put it on my list. (laughs) (laughs) It was totally an idea I had. And I was like, I wonder if you've ever thought of doing that. Because you already said it. You know, you started before you were ready I remember feeling terrified to hit record and then put something up on YouTube. It felt way scarier than like a Facebook Live. But really, 
you're already creating that content. Connected yoga teachers, I'm popping in again to let you know that we did a live interview with Victoria Levitan all about YouTube, and it was so helpful. I'll make sure that I link to that in the show notes, and I'll also link to StreamYard, which is what I was telling Laura about here. Also, Laura and anyone else listening, don't ever listen to anyone's ideas, especially mine, when it doesn't feel like it's the time to add something new. So I'm re-listening to this audio right now and I'm thinking, oh wow, I sound a little bit bossy right now and Laura didn't ask me for more marketing ideas. What she's doing is working and there's no need to add anything new right now unless she wants to grow her audience or something So I just wanted to put that out there that all the time I think of like, ooh, this idea might work. And sometimes it's not the time to add something new in. When does your next training start then? So it's called Learn to Teach Yoga to Young Children. My company is called Calm Kids Yoga. And that just wrapped up this past Saturday, which was amazing. And I had... 55 people in that training. So it goes to show you how you can really offer a training. And that's the thing about online. I could never do that in person, but online I I can do it that way. So it was really exciting and I got really positive feedback. I just want to come back to like 55 registrants for that training. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Now I did Amanda McKinney, shout out to her again, because I really followed her rules <laughs> or her suggestions of how to do things. I really did. I tried to stick to it and follow what she always says to do, invite people to the party. And, you know, you get the big push at the beginning and then you have to, you know, be consistent over time. And then a big push right before you start the course And so I really did that. It worked very well. Um, And like I said, offering special discounts to exclusive members. I've run this course now online three times. That was the third time. And remember, I only created it a year ago. The first time I had 40 people in it. The second time, I think I had about 28 And then this time I had 55 people, which was, and I thought, oh my goodness, how am I going to ever do this? But as it worked out, I'd say about a third of the people weren't actually attending live because they weren't available to attend live, but they understood that I recorded all of my live classes and posted them up to the course site within 24 hours. So they knew they could take it. And also the other piece about it is that My courses, you have lifetime access. So you can take as long as you want to take the training. That's okay with me. Uh, There is a self-reflection final assignment that you have to submit to me before you receive your certificate, of course. And there's homework along the way and little quizzes and all that kind of stuff to really integrate the learning. It's a pretty rich course. I sell it as a 20-hour course, but actually it's much more than that. I think if everyone takes the time to engage with all of the resources. That's amazing. Big exciting news, Connected Yoga Teachers. Laura has offered all of our listeners a discount on her courses. So there's a coupon code CYT, that stands for Connected Yoga Teacher 10, that can be applied at checkout. So that gives you 10% off anytime on her courses. Now, currently she has three courses and we'll link to all of these and make sure that we write out that coupon code for you so you can find all of this over at theconnectedyogateacher.com slash 255. Laura has a two-hour workshop, Calm Down Strategies for Reducing Anxiety. She has a 10-hour course that's called Learn to Teach Simple Meditations to Young Children. And then there's a 20-hour course, Learn to Teach Yoga to Young Children. With these courses, you get full access to everything and a ton of resources as well. There's downloadable PDFs and demo videos, and you can find all of her courses over at calmkidsyoga.teachable.com. And like I said, we'll put that in the show notes for you. So you could just go to the connected yoga teacher.com slash two five five or go to our website and search for Laura Fowler Massey. 
It's so exciting to hear this journey because for our listeners, Laura and I went to record quite a long time ago. It was actually right around when the pandemic hit and Zoom was overrun and the the files didn't even process properly that day. And I think it's kind of a blessing because I feel like now you've pivoted to online, you did that really well, and you learned a lot along the way. So I'm excited. I feel like our yoga teachers, if they take anything from this, I hope they listen to how you niche down, how you really marketed to that group. I want to ask one more thing, which is how did you come up with the wording that would connect to those early childhood educators? Okay, so that's a great question. And when I was taking the initial course with Emily Cecil, that was one of the things that she really taught me, which was excellent. Because I I know the jargon of the profession, which I think is important. You have to speak in the language of your target audience. So I knew that, but at the same time, I wasn't exactly sure. And so you kind of do your market research in your Facebook group. You ask people questions and you get them to offer their opinions and their thoughts and ideas around things. And then you capture that information, right? What they say to you. I've also heard Amanda say this many times as well. So listen to what your target audience says to you and then use those words to craft your message. And so I really did that. I really, you know, tried to follow these ladies because they know what they're talking about. And also for my Facebook group, which was one of the things that Emily had told me is when you want to join the free Facebook group, there's some enrollment questions, you know? And so I would ask them, uh, what are you hoping to get by joining this group, which is called Calm Kids Yoga for Early Childhood Educators? That's the name of my Facebook group, if anybody out there wants to join. <laughs> and then people would tell me, you know, this is what they want. This is what they're interested in. And I would use that information not only to craft the marketing language, but also to decide what I was going to do on my Facebook lives. I would respond. People would say that they're struggling with settling children down before sleep. So then I would come up with a simple meditation or a, a little practice or an audio story that I had or whatever it is I created to actually help them with that challenge, you know, that they've told me about. And so I feel like I was being sincere and honest by really responding to what the people were saying they needed from me and they were interested in learning about. So I would respond to that. That's amazing. Laura, I'm so excited. I feel like in the things that you've told me, I feel super inspired. In our Connected Yoga Teacher group, I definitely see the questions that come in because we have a large group and people are posting them. But I feel like you going live is really inspirational. You know, I know that it's not the easiest thing to do. So I have some new ideas from this and I'm sure our Connected Yoga Teachers will as well. If they want to reach out to you and find out more on how to take your course or look for your ebook, or if they know an early childhood educator, where's the best place for them to go? The best place to go is calmkidsyoga.teachable.com. They can also find me at my website, which is calmkidsyoga.ca. Or they can find me on Facebook. My group, as I said, is Calm Kids Yoga for Early Childhood Educators. We'll make sure to link to those in the show notes. Congratulations on launching such a successful course. And then thanks also for sharing some tips and tricks for all of us. Thank you for your time today. Thank you very much, Shannon. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you so much again, Laura. What a treat it was to talk to you. I get really excited hearing stories about niching down. And I also want to highlight that this doesn't mean that this is all Laura teaches. I know that in the summertime, she teaches yoga on a bridge in her community to adults. So it's not like when you decide to niche down, that's the only thing you get to do. It can be the only thing that you decide to market. So niching down is different for each and every person. If you have questions about niching down, post them in our Facebook group. That's the Connected Yoga Teacher Facebook group. Or send us an email, info at theconnectedyogateacher.com. 
I also have some other announcements to tell you about Connected Yoga Teachers. So one is online, some online learning over on pelvichealthprofessionals.com. We have a guest speaker each and every month with a new topic that we're learning about together. And it's really cool because we have it set up so that you can actually submit questions and you can submit them anonymously if you want. And then the replay is there for you as well. So we take full notes. There's a transcript. It's an amazing resource for learning. In January, on January 10th, so this is already passed, but you can go back and watch the replay. We talk with Diane Liska, who's a psychotherapist, and we talk about sexual trauma and how that relates to someone when they're dealing with pelvic health issues or how it relates when we're working with people one-on-one or in group settings as yoga teachers. February 14th, happy Valentine's Day. We are going to learn all about the hypopressive technique with Trista Zinn. I'm really excited about this because I recently talked to Trista. We had her on the podcast a while back. We can link to that episode. And she told me that she's teaching more and more online these days, which is really cool. So we're going to learn the hypopressive technique with her teaching us online. Then in March on the 14th, we are going to learn from Mary Flaherty all about how to look at a study, how to look at research with a very discerning eye and how to read the research and question the research. I'm excited about that. And then April the 11th, we're going to be talking with Lori Walker Krauss all about children's pelvic health. Now, if you'd like to learn with us, the really cool thing is, is you can go over to pelvichealthprofessionals.com and there's a monthly amount that you pay to be a member and to learn with us and you get full access to every single thing in the library. And then we hire the guest experts. So we pay our guest experts. You don't have to pay them this big amount. We take care of that and we all get to learn together as a community. And one other thing, I can't wait. I'm going to be in person at the Yoga Teacher Conf in Denver, Colorado, April 22nd to the 24th, where I will be sharing a workshop on pelvic health. And I just found out that I might also be leading an all-day workshop where we help you make your business plan as a yoga teacher, where you plan everything out and really dig into what to focus on right now. Also, I am just going to be there talking with as many yoga teachers as I can connect with and possibly doing some podcast interviews. So let me know if you're also going to be there. I would love to meet up in real life. I want to say thank you so much for being here today all the way to the end of the episode. Your support is what makes this podcast possible. Your questions is the fuel for the topics that we bring onto the podcast, and it just wouldn't exist without you. I also want to thank our entire team over here who makes things run so smoothly. Suzanne is our audio engineer. Crunch is our resident writer. Sinead, our community support manager, and Erica, our virtual assistant. So if you have been listening for a while, you know the question that I'm going to ask as we close out today's episode. What will you be doing this week to stay connected to yourself, your yoga practice, and to your community so that you can share the yoga that lights you up?